Hey, Jim Walensky here. I want to talk to you about my favorite new feature in Photo Raw 2018, and that's the ability to manipulate luminosity masks. First, we need to talk about what a luminosity mask is. I'm going to add a filter here, and uh, I've got a black to white gradient, very simple black to white gradient, and I'm just going to add a split tone. And I've created a solid color preset here, which is just the same color, both in the shadows and the highlights turned up to 100. Now, I'm going to go up into my mask here, and I'm going to create a luminosity mask. What a luminosity mask is, is a mask that's created based on the lightness or darkness of the tones in the image. If I make a lights luminosity mask, it's going to select the light tones more, and it's going to select the dark tones less. The great thing about luminosity masks is they're self-feathering. Just as we can see this gradient feathers off from black to white or from white to black, the mask that's going to be created from it is going to have the same feathering. And that's really cool. So let me turn this back on and I'm just going to create a luminosity mask. Now, by default, Photo Raw creates a light luminosity mask. And you can see the mask here. That means that the lighter tones are going to show through and the grayer tones are going to show less and less and less and less until they get all the way over to black. And if we view the mask, you'll see that the mask looks exactly like the gradient. If I invert this mask, it flips around and now we have a darks mask, which means that the dark tones are more selected and the gray tones are less and less and less selected until we get to white. So if I turn the view off, You'll see that I see the pink in the darker tones of my gradient, which is my main image. And in the lighter tones, I don't see the pink at all. That's great. The cool part is that we can actually manipulate this mask on the fly now. So I have, I'm going to turn my view back on and I'm going to go back to a lights luminosity mask. And I've got these two sets of controls down here. So the window control, I want you to think of as the floor and the ceiling of your mask. Where do you want your blacks to begin? So I can pull this over, and you see that the further I pull it over, the more black I get. That means that the tone that I've selected here with this triangle and everything below it is going to be black. If I do the same thing with the whites and I bring this over, we call this choking the mask. Back when I used to make masks for a living, we would call this choking the mask. So I'm choking the mask here and I'm squeezing my whites over into the midtone. So now everything from this tone and above is excluded from the mask. So this is the floor of your mask. This is the ceiling of your mask. And everything above the white point that you set and everything below the black point that you set are excluded from the mask. The only things that are included in the mask are the tones that are in here. So I'm going to reset those. Let's talk about levels now. So we have two sliders on the outside of our control here. And we also have this slider in the middle. This represents the midpoint, the gray point of my mask which falls in this case right in the middle because it's represented by 128 gray, right? Middle gray. I can change where that appears on my mask. So I can push my gray point, my 128 gray point, all the way to the right if I want. Now middle gray is over here. If I pull it this way, middle gray is over here and all of this is white. So what happens is the mask feathers between the absolute white point and the 128 gray point, the middle gray point, and then it feathers again from middle gray to black. If I double click on this, I can reset this. Let's turn the view back on and see what this means. So I can pull my white point in and I can see that now everything that's this tone and above is now white in my mask. I can do the same thing over here and I can pull this stuff in like this but now I can move the transition point around. What if I want to affect just my midtones? I can set the floor of my mask here and the ceiling of my mask here, say. And now I can actually move my mask around. 
I can't go past my window points, my floor and ceiling points, but I can shift my gray tones around. And I know all this seems kind of abstract right now, and I'm going to show you a real world example. So let's just reset this. I'm going to get rid of this, and we're going to go over into the browser, and I'm going to grab this image. So I haven't really done any editing to this image other than just kind of general setting up the histogram. Now I'm going to add a tone enhancer. And I want to bring up this building. If I try to do this in the exposure controls, I bring up everything. And that's not what I want. I'm going to make a mask here. So I'm going to click on my tone enhancer and I'm going to ask for a luminosity mask. And you can see that it's created a lights luminosity mask. So the lighter tones are more selected than the darker tones. And it's based on the luminosity or the brightness and darkness of this image. What I really want are the dark tones selected. I want this selected. So I'm just going to hit invert. And right away, that's looking better. So I don't want my sky selected, which is really bright. And I don't want all of these buildings selected. So I can actually pull my window in. And you'll see that my sky starts to shut down because it's really bright, right? And because that's the blacker part of my mask. And now I can move my midpoint around if I need to. But I think before I do that, I'm going to pull my whites in. And I want to make my whites brighter. So I need to use the levels control. If I use this, I'm going to start to exclude my whites. That's not what I want. So I'm going to make those brighter and I'm going to push my midtones and squeeze my midtones over even more to exclude more of the tones I don't want. So that looks really good. I've got this building selected really well. I'm going to turn the view off and now when I bring my shadows up, they only come up where I want them to come up. So you can see that I've got some other parts of the image being affected and we'll fix that in a minute really fast. So I'm going to add some maybe a little detail in here. I'm just looking at this now and maybe a little clarity just like that. So here's my before and here's my after before and after. So I want to get rid of the parts of my mask that affect the other parts of the image. And this is really easy to do. All I'm going to do is click View. And I'm going to grab my brush, make sure that I'm painting out. And I'm just going to paint this stuff out. And I'll go along here a little bit. Now, if I was doing this for real, I would be much more precise with what I'm doing here. But for the sake of this demo, I think you get the idea. So if I turn my view off and before and after, now it's just affecting my building. So this is a really powerful feature and I'm really just scratching the surface here. Play with these controls in the luminosity masking feature because you can really dial in a selection really fast and save yourself a lot of brushwork and a lot of selection stuff that can get really frustrating and take a long time. I love this new feature. This is Jim Walensky. Be creative, have fun, and I will see you next time.